Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Critical Podcast. My name is Jimmy Good, and I am but one of your hosts. And joining me, as always, is my go-to podcast compadre and former, well, not former, but other general, Joe. There you go. You're not former, Joe. Hi, Joe. How's it going? Hi, general. <laughs> reporting for duty. Well, that makes me feel a lot <laughs> less bad about what I just did right there. But <laughs> hey, you, I'm doing all right, Jimmy. How are you doing this evening? I'm, I'm doing just fine. Thank you so much. It's starting fine. to heat up. It's starting it to heat is. up, Joe. It is. It's about 85 and a little humid, a little sticky, huh? Not exactly. bad. Exactly. Like, eventually here, there's going to be, I'm going to I gotta get my little window AC unit in there, just a little peek behind the oh, curtain. Who doesn't like the feeling of good AC? No no humidity in that air. It's just cool Man, and yeah. crisp. It's so That'll good. That'll put you right to sleep, am I right? People were savages before that. But I found out recently, Joe, that AC, obviously not, like, throughout the entire world, but some um, other countries, like, apparently Britain, they don't really use a lot of air conditioning, so... Good on them. Yeah, I, I, you know what? Like, get on you, Britain. You're you're stronger than us. We're weak. Mm. I'm a weak person. I need my cold. I live in a cold place, so I need it all year round. If I don't have it, I'll die. Anyway, for anybody joining us for the very first time, welcome. So, welcome, welcome. Uh, we talk movies, games, TV shows, uh, cookbooks. Apparently, sometimes, but uh, we don't know, huh? We talk oh, weather. We do talk weather. We <laughs> like all the weather out there, huh? Yeah, exactly. We like to just make, we have to ease you into something like this because it's just like, well, just easy, easy going. But anyway. Yeah, little little insight into the back, behind the scenes here. Mm-hmm. That's prior, to, prior to recording the podcast here, we had to postpone the recording here. We were actually, uh, the, the heat and humidity led to some uh, pretty severe storms up north of where I live and uh, some uh, family concerns and... Uh, you know, making sure people are okay and all that. Some yeah, destruction I was, north. I was cons- I was concerned, and I was worried that we were gonna have to call it on account of uh, severe rain, not just regular rain. Which you know, <laughs> sports joke. I did it. You guys can't ever say I didn't make a sports joke because I did it. Um, Zing! But anyway, we got. Yeah. We have a little. How about of- that weather? <laughs> We have a little bit of news to start off with, but because it is the launch week for Injustice Two. I don't know if it's technically Gods Among Us as well, you know, like probably not that title, you know. Uh, we're going to play a little game here. So if you want to check out in the um, description down below, there will be a link to this. But right over here on IGN, they have a list and the roster basically for the game. And so for anyone who's ever played the old board game, Guess Who, that's what we're going to be playing. We're going to be playing Guess Who with Injustice 2. So if you're unfamiliar with Guess Who, which Joe was, basically it was a game back in the day where each person had the same like roster or group of just fake people. So it'd be like Bill and Frank and Alice and all this stuff. And then each of them would draw a card. And then he'd say like, oh, I got Bill and Joe got Alice. And so we'd each look at our little roster of people and then we would ask questions back and forth to see which character it was. So it, like if Joe were to ask, is your person uh, female? I would say, I might say, no, it's not. And then he would say, okay. And then he'd knock down all the females on there. So then it would only be the males propped up. So you keep asking these questions back and forth to see who would get it correct first. The fun part about playing it this way is that there is a chance that Joe and I might pick the exact same individual, which would be even more fun because we'd both be like, wait a sec, did you pick blah, blah, blah. So look at home, watch at home, see if you can figure out who Joe and I have picked to start. Joe, do you have your person or character? <laughs> I'm prepared, Jimmy. I'm ready to go. He's prepared. All right. I have my character as well. Joe, would you like to do the honors and ask the first question? <laughs> I want to start off with something really dumb. Does your character have blue eyes? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I was like, I need to look. I need right, to look, look I, I, okay. And? Is that, is that your question? Yeah. Uh, they do not. They do not have blue eyes. Joe, is your person a female? No. Ah, oh, dang it. That's usually a good one that you'd like. All right, all right, all right. All right. Anyway, 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 next. Your, your turn, your turn. Does your person have... Is your person's suit primarily green? Oh, no. Outfit, look, etc. Nope. No, they do not. 
Okay. Oh, geez. This is a lot harder without being able to knock down the little pictures that they're like, these are the only ones that are left. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Does your person, does your, you have a guy basically now, we know that. Uh, does he have black hair? Or creature black has black hair? No. Oh, all right. That we can see, I should say. That we can see, because I don't, I, you know, I don't want to get to like a technicality for Batman and be like, "Oh, actually, has black hair underneath the cowl." I'll be like, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> okay, so it isn't Superman. All right, well, you've. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at a loss. I don't know who it could be now. <laughs> How could he not pick Superman? He always <laughs> picks Superman. I know. I'm like, ah. All my right, my turn. turn. It's your turn. I should be writing this information down. <laughs> Is your character a male? Yes. Mm -hmm. that, I, that I know of. All right. So just to keep everybody up to date and myself, Joe has a guy that does not have black hair. And, <laughs> and Jimmy has a guy that does not have a green outfit. Yep. Or any green on his outfit. That's true. All right, Joe. Does your person... Is your person wearing any, um, oh, uh, wow, well, that might, help. is your person wearing any, like, type of helmet slash hood? <laughs> no. Okay. Right. It's a technicality of these cyborg, and I'll be like, so. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, does your character have a cape? They do not. They do not. Okay. Ooh. Does your person have blonde hair? They do not. Ugh. All right. <laughs> the tension builds. Dude, this is actually tough. I mean, there's a decent roster to pick from. So yeah, the more I look at it, I thought before I was like, this roster's not going to be that great. And I was like, look, <laughs> like they got some characters in there. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, but this is fun. No, I, I hope people that are listening are playing along and trying to guess as we go through. Um, I feel bad for our audio listeners who are like, <laughs> like I don't even know what the roster looks like. I'm sorry, audio listeners. You are going to give them the link, right? Yeah, the link's there. I just mean like if they're listening in their car or whatever. Yeah. Um, all right, it's my turn. I asked if they had a cape. You said no. They don't have any green, and it's a male. It's funny, because like, to me, like that singles out like the people, one of the people I've... I haven't chosen multiple people, but it's like down to two if you say it like that, and I'm like, uh... uh with no cape? Yeah, with no cape. Really? No cape. I, there's actually a few... I'm looking at already one, two, three, four. I'm looking at quite a few that don't have capes that are male <laughs> without green. Hmm. I got to think like Jimmy right now. Yep. Got to think like me. Um, Master tactician. Not true. Hmm. Okay, no cape. For some reason, I keep looking at one with a cape. I'm like... <laughs> Joe's just like staring at that one. He's like... Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I know he said no cape and it was a man, but I still feel like he chose Supergirl. Is yours from... Considering that most of... The... Oh, never mind. Is yours originating from outer space? Yes. <laughs> I had to think about it for a second. Uh, does your person, does your man actually have hair? No. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> that narrows it down. That really does. <laughs> A lot of baldies in this game. 
does your character wear a mask? Technically, yes. Okay. At least so. Okay. Uh, oh, let's see. Does your person... Is your person green? Like green-skinned? Yes. All right. In most other games, that wouldn't narrow it down. Like, or I say, this game, it doesn't narrow it down as much as you would think it would. Like, in a lot of, like, you played a Marvel version, like, oh, you got the Hulk. You know, like, here, it's kind of like... Yeah, yeah. Well, true, true. Does your character... Is your character able to... Move as, as fast as Superman. Um, uh, we're gonna need a fact check. <laughs> Seriously, wow. Well, I'm not. I I don't think so. I'm no, 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 no. You know, what? I'm gonna I'm gonna say right now. I don't even need to look it up. They do not. They they do not move as fast as as Superman. All right. So let's think. recap. For you, I've got it's a male with no cape. Mm -hmm. And no green, mm -hmm. wears a mask, mm -hmm. and cannot move as fast as Superman. That is correct. And, like I, not, I, I, and I mean, like, remotely close to Superman. No, well, Superman is, like, one of the fastest individuals in this universe. So, no, I don't think so. I'm pretty positive this person cannot do that. Uh, Joe, my last question before I'm going to uh, make a call. Does your person have red eyes? Depending on the day. <laughs> Depending. How about this picture? Would you say that they have red eyes? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right. Okay. Your your turn, Joe. Do you get you? Whoever gets there first, that's what they say. Depending on the day, <laughs> with a with a wind at his back and all that, you know. Does your character's superpower revolve around heat? Uh, no. Okay. Is your character Swamp Thing? On a good day with the wind at his back. Yes. <laughs> yes, I did it. All right, Joe, you get to guess. You got to guess and see if we can tie it up here. Take a shot. Take a shot, Ski. No cape. Where's the mask? From outer space, no green. He's a male. Yeah, I feel kind of bad about this one because I wonder if it it would seem like if you didn't know about him enough, you'd be like, "Is that really a mask?" And technically, it is. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you one more, give you one more like question that you can ask, and then you have to. Uh, no cape wears a mask. No cape wears a mask. It's not Flash and it's not Firestorm, I'll tell you that much right now. <laughs> yeah, I figured that one out. <laughs> when you're like, uh, is it Firebase? I was like, ah, uh, no. It's like, I don't think so. Is oh, he heavily? Uh, huh? Is he associated with Halloween in any way? No. You're gonna have to make a guess, don't you? No green, outer space. Wears a mask. Yep, yep, yep. It's either dark side or dark side, or who is the other one I had eyed up here? Um. A, 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 a tra, a atrocitus. Tro, atrocitus. I'm sorry. Neither of those were correct. Blue Beetle. 
That's correct. There you go. <laughs> wow. I should have written it down because I was going to say, like, oh, people, I could have just made it up, but I should have been like, ah, Blue Beetle. Um, Blue Beetle yeah. cannot move as fast as Superman. Good answer. I don't know um, why we, we didn't, we shouldn't have contemplated Well, and you know a little bit about him now. He's kind of like the combination of Iron Man and Venom, which is kind of yeah. cool, I think. That's really cool. I'm like, oh, Blue Beetle. Did he or, originate from space? I thought it was like a experimental thing from like a government group. The, the scarab. Beetle, the scarab. I believe the scarab comes from. So you think it's Smallville, right? Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say Smallville plays fast and loose with a few things, um, but I'm pretty sure Blue Beetle is from outer space. Fact check, check, otherwise we gotta redo because you lied. From outer space. I'm pretty sure he is. Forgive me, I could be completely wrong on this. If they're like Jimmy, you don't know anything about this. I'm just clicking right on his bio here. He looks pretty cool in this. Hey, he does look pretty sweet, actually. Uh, are there any other characters that jump out at you right away, Joe, where you're like, man, I really like that character? Um, Scarecrow looks awesome. He does look uh, awesome. I love that rendition of him. Like, He literally looks like he's out of a Halloween time horror movie, hence my Halloween question. Yeah, oh, exactly. Oh, I should have. I wanted to pick him. Um... From, it is. It's an alien weapon of mass destruction. Yeah, I, was just gonna say, I was like, I'm pretty sure. I was looking up. I'm like, okay, thank God. <laughs> I was like, I, I feel so bad if I like led you astray, as it were. Anyway, uh, yeah. So Scarecrow is that one. That's one that jumps out to you. Do you like the idea of Superman being a villain? Yeah, because it kind of coincides with what they've set up recently in like the the DC universe and that sort of thing, and. Let's face it. I mean, if I would, if I had any of the abilities of Superman, <laughs> I don't think I'd necessarily be goody two shoes all the time. Or if somebody really did me wrong, it's over. <laughs> they would never find him. <laughs> you are such a like. Oh man, I really want Hyperion and the uh, the Squadron Supreme to come out from Marvel because that's just that's exactly what that's about. It's just like you know, everybody's gonna obey the law, and I'm gonna be treated like a god. And if you step on a line, I'm just gonna snap your neck. Like. Get out of here. Ah, uh, yeah. It looks so basically cool. a super super villain dictator is what we're saying. Yeah, that's how the Justice League, <laughs> the Squadron Supreme is like the Justice League, but just they're all a bunch of dictators. They're just kind of like, yep. And there's no crime because everyone's like, don't step out of line, otherwise the Squadron's gonna come. Uh, Joe, yeah, is this? Bro, I love it. <laughs> now, with this game, Joe, is it? You know, I know you just bought um, Mortal, Mortal Kombat, Kombat and I haven't played it but once. Yeah. Okay. Is there any part of you that's interested in this? Like, would you actually think of picking it up? Or is this something that you're like, I'll just wait, like, a long time until it's, like, 20 bucks, and then I might get or it? Or it's, like, a free with gold thing. <laughs> oh, that would not... This would not be a free with gold for, like, five years, maybe. Yeah. Um, sorry to say, I just don't think I get... I mean, maybe $20 worth of fun out of it. Okay. Maybe. Um, I'm not real good at memorizing button combinations to do moves. Sure. Yeah, um, that can be tough. Yeah, the pace of it and everything, you end up kind of button mashing sometimes. Um, but overall, I feel like, you know, short and sweet fights, I mean, it can be entertaining, but it's something that you got to stick to with your butts. If you're going to commit to it, it's like you and your buddies really got to get into it and, and really yeah. duke it out and be like, oh, there was such a nail biter at the end kind of a deal. Um it would take a lot of practice for me to get good at them, and you know it's the same thing with Mortal Kombat. I see a few of the finishing moves and all that, and it's cool. And but then after that, it kind of it kind of loses its luster a little bit. Sorry to say. Yeah. Um, one thing I can say about it is the characters are cool. Obviously, it's a DC universe. The yeah. design of the characters is pretty awesome. Um, and that's about it. I mean, you kind of get get a little bit. I, I mean, this even this web page, you know, the link that you're going to give everybody for the um, Guess Who game. It's cool to look at. It gives you a little synopsis of their background as well as some of their in-game um, information, um, which I which I find interesting and fun. I just I don't think I would get full game price worth of value out of it. I really don't. Um, I would love to either get the old one or this one that comes down in price because I really want to fight you as Batman and you play as Superman. 
I'm just saying it could be a lot of fun. It could be a good time beating each yeah, other up. I will say the animations and everything for some of the moves look really cool. Yeah, you could be Scarecrow too. You want to be creep? I could be Captain Cold, which is like I'm like, how did he make it in? But like uh Mr. Freeze didn't. It's like, all right, well I guess they're Captain you know, Cold's a little more relative and hip. Yeah, he's more hip for sure right now. And I wish they would give uh them like a Mr. Freeze costume for that, like the Arkham City one. Oh, that one looks so good. They have like upgradable gear in this game, so you can make Superman or any character kind of look certain ways. Do you like that idea or do you would you rather keep it to the icon? Can I give him a black suit? Uh, like, I think the black and red is kind of, like, uh, one of the, like, staples of him looking in this game a little bit. So, yeah, you can... <laughs> Joe's like, all right, well, I guess I have to go buy the game now. Yeah. I'm just going to play as Superman every time. I just wish Deathstroke would be in it. He was in the first game. Apparently, he was very spammable, so I, I don't think he's going to be in this one. Or he might be DLC, which is another thing about these fighting games. I feel like I'd rather wait until they make, like, the Game of the Year edition, and it's, like, 30 bucks, and it has all the fighters, like, every single thing in there, and you don't think, like, oh, man, I had to spend, like, a few extra bucks to get, like, Lobo or something weird like that. So, yeah, it does look cool, and I think the story is the most interesting thing. If you can make a fighting game, like, people are interested about the story, kudos to you guys. That's very impressive, so... Yeah, and Justice 2 launched this week. Let us know if you guys have been playing it, and if there's any characters that are your favorite, or if there are any characters that you're like, why the heck didn't they put that in there? It's so stupid. So it'll probably be coming down the pipeline, so you can pay for them separately. Anyway, so Joe, we got some interesting news here besides just Injustice. We could talk about Injustice the whole time. But Ubisoft finally and officially announced that they've got three big games coming within the next fiscal year. Kind of interesting, they confirmed that Assassin's Creed was going to be one of them, so that Assassin's Creed Origins, probably the Egypt game we talked about last week, will be one of those focuses. And Far Cry 5. Now, I know you haven't played a lot of Far Cry. I played a bit of Far Cry. I started with 2, which was in Africa, 3, which is like a tropical, and then 4, which was in Nepal. But I was trying to think of like what setting it could be in. Now, there's been rumors that there's been like a crew shooting out in Montana, and that it might take place where you are like a vigilante cop dealing with individuals out there as kind of like a West, not Western, but kind of West style of game. Yeah, Is that I've been to Montana. I know what it's like out there. Would you like to Rough be, in, yeah, would you like to blow up Montana? <laughs> like, you, like Montana would explode while you were there? Is that a game you'd want to be a part of? Like, is that something that interests you? Is it pretty country? Is it good enough that you'd want to explore that area? Heck Yeah. <laughs> Would skis, yeah. do you need to have skis in this game? Yes, and a <laughs> snowmobile. Sure, oh, snowmobiles for sure. And I think uh, Far Cry's used other, like, jet skis and stuff in the past, so they wouldn't um, hesitate to use that. But I don't know, Joe, Do you? would you like to be a vigilante cop in Montana on your skis and your snowmobile, doling out justice and snapping necks and throwing knives? I think so. I think it would be cool. I mean, the mountainous uh, aspect, obviously, it would have to be oh, yeah. far western Montana, maybe northwestern. Um, like Rockies. let's face it, like two thirds to three quarters of Montana is flat. Sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I I jump on that one. I, I like that. Okay, cool. Well, I know that the uh, other ones have had co-op in the past, and that's one of the most fun things about Far Cry or any game to me personally is like the co-op aspect. So playing like with Tom when we go like take over a fort together and you kind of like sneak in and like kill everybody. You could do it quietly. You could do it loud. They didn't say you couldn't. You could do it one way or the other. But Ubisoft kind of like with Ghost Recon's, they kind of say like, hey, like here's this thing. You do it however you want to, and you're like, okay. But yeah. Oh, so is that confirmed? They want to do that with this one? Not confirmed, but I'd be surprised if they didn't have that aspect in it. I think it's it's highly desired, right? I think it just adds an extra boost to that game, and maybe I, I think it creates a little bit of extra interest from people, maybe such as myself, that is open to that idea. You know, it's more story driven, but you still have that kind of make decisions and and do it how you want sort of a deal. I mean, with the success of Ghost Recon, I think that's been a lot of fun being able to kind of attack certain scenarios and situations based on your own free will. Yeah. Uh, you know, and there's plenty of ways to get it done. So I, I think it could be successful, especially being that it's more story driven. I know Ghost Recon can start to feel a little grindy after a while and you're just kind of doing the same things over and over. Every once in a while you get a bit of new flavor tossed in there, a little salt, a little pepper. Yeah. But Otherwise, you know, it's pretty straightforward. So I, I think something like this would make 
Far Cry, pretty fun. Yeah, well, I'm hoping, too, that they do what they did with Ghost Recon in that, like, you and I would have stories that we could go back to and complete at any time, but you could jump into my story, I could jump into your story at any time. Sure. Because in Far Cry, what would happen is, like, you would be doing a story mission, and I couldn't help you on story missions. I can help you take an outpost or kind of go around the world and do whatever, but we couldn't do the story together in any way. So I'm hoping that, like you said, with Ghost Recon and the uh, the success of it, I'm thinking that that's what they'll probably try to do because far cry has kind of been all over the place they made far cry primal it was like last year the year before sure, and it was, what was that one about like some something with like hunting of exotics you're taking down poachers or something no that was um there's uh, almost all the games are like that but then you end up being the poacher because you're like i want a new wallet so i have to kill a rhino no far seriously cry that's horrible yeah i never felt good about it Far Cry Primal was like you playing as a barbarian or like even further back. Think like early, early man, like spears and like you had animal pets and you were fighting other tribesmen, things like that. That's that's what that one was. So, yeah, uh, some people liked it. I don't know. I never played it. And I was kind of like, uh, not for me necessarily. I do like Far Cry, but I I'm just kind of waiting for the next big uh, entry in the series. So, yeah, we'll see how Far Cry 5 fares and. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Weird. So the other one was Assassin's Creed. Yeah, yep. Far Cry. What's the what's the last one we're we're thinking? I think Crew Two was the last one. I think it was like a driving game. I think Crew Two. The Crew Two. Yeah, I'm not sure. They'll probably talk about it more at E3. But those are the two big ones. A lot of people were theorizing that it could be something like Splinter Cell. Uh, Far Cry was obviously on there and now confirmed, but. Uh, the interesting thing about Back to Far Cry for a second, the logo they put out was like all kind of whited out with like some blue and red kind of around the edges. I don't know if that's supposed to indicate like, you know, maybe America. That's why it would be in Montana or something along those lines. I don't know. So, sure. yeah, I would love a new Splinter Cell, though. Splinter Cell games are cool. I didn't play the more recent ones. Uh, Michael Ironside, the guy who did the voice for him. You would know him, Joe, as... Um, Oh, I can't think of her name. Lois Lane's dad uh, from Smallville, the the one that she always talked about so much. That's the guy who used to do the voice for Sam Fisher, and he was great. And then they replaced him with somebody completely different, and it was very strange. Not a bad game, necessarily. I just didn't really get a chance to play it. But, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Uh, apparently, they're also working on some Avatar game, but it's not going to be out until, like, 2021. I didn't even know they made a game for Avatar, like the, the blue Navi and all that stuff. Seriously? I had to look it up. It was like a third-person shooter that, like, you were, like, a soldier sometimes, and then you got to get an avatar, and it looked really weird and clunky. I don't know if anyone's yeah. played this game. Apparently, it was very successful, but I don't know. I'm not going to be down on Avatar. Not today. If you love Avatar, good for you. That's all That's, that's all I got to say about that. Anyway, Joe, the last thing I want to talk about, and kind of segueing into the bigger portion of tonight's podcast, we got some set photos from the next Predator film. Looks like a few individuals hanging on an AC, APC, like humans, with a few actual predators, alluding to these the plot line that humans and predators might team up to fight another group of predators. So, Joe, how do you feel about that? I know you were kind of hesitant towards all this. Yeah, yeah Jimmy and I almost got into a scuffle. Yeah, you know me. I'm always right. <laughs> first rare reaction was bullshit. I was bullshit. like, well, how dare you? Jimmy, you brought up a good point to kind of calm me down on the whole thing. Um, you noted that um, technically throughout the past, that's been kind of a standard staple with the Predator series, right? The Predator kind of teams teams up a little bit, like uh, Predators, Predators on the on the planet. That yep. one kind of helps them somewhat. I can't recall that well, but that one, uh, Alien vs. Predator, when they're, where they're in that under-ice temple down in Antarctica. Yeah, that's the best example. And that one's kind of understandable. It kind of turns into a thing where the Predator understands she's not a threat and she's helping, and he's got bigger issues to deal with. Yeah. Uh, so kind of showing the intelligence there. Um, but, like... I don't know, part of me wants to think of that like royal slash uh, predatory hierarchy deal where the predators like, I don't need these freaking humans and they kind of handle it on their own, you know, sure. but I mean, it seems like a bit of a reach to me, but I, I, I don't know. I, I don't, you know, people, 
there was a video online talking about these uh, photography shots from the set. Like, this one seems to be wearing human camouflage and clothing. I'm like, what? I don't know. What? I feel that might I be didn't really stretch. see that. I think that's a little stretched, but yeah. Like, where do you wow. go to Big and Tall? <laughs> They're like, all right, our buddy, he's joining us. We're going to have to make some camo for him. And he's just standing there, and he's like, oh. we're like all right, let's measure him out. And he's like, oh. he's uh, screw it. The shop online. It'll be here next week or tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I... I feel like we're starting to see that trend, Joe. We're, we're seeing it now with, like, War of the, for the Planet of the Apes, like, where there's some gorillas or apes that are teaming up with the humans. We've seen it now also in, like, Jurassic World, where the raptors team up with the humans for a bit, but then they don't. Yeah, well, we all know how that one played out. Worst thing ever. So I'm wondering if it's some sort of cultural norm that we're going to have to get used to or something like a theme that, like, it's like, all right, team up with the enemy. Like you're the enemy of my enemy, and like let's group up and like like try to have the humans interact with these things because I guess up until this point, it's hard for us to understand and really feel for these bad guys until they team up with us, and then you can start to understand like oh, this is why he wants to do this. This is why this is the motivation because they just look like an enemy, but now we're taking the enemy and saying well there might be a little bit more kind of human stuff to them than we thought. Well, and I'm not saying it's not doable. They just have to introduce that in the right way and make interactions that'll help that make sense. Sure. I don't think it just can just be like outright, like all of a sudden an attack happens from some stronger predators, some hybrid predators or something. And so the normal predators are like, you human, you help. <laughs> I, you know, I, I just... Classic predator line. No. <laughs> yeah, like I, I don't know. I just I hope they do a good job with it if that's the direction they're going, which obviously, you know, photos would you know lead us to assume that. Or maybe it was just them taking a break or hitching a ride back to base camp for lunch. Yeah, that could that could very you know, well be I mean, that too. <laughs> yeah, it might not even that. be the case. So Yeah, I don't remember if they said in the plot if there's like a story or plot synopsis that said that. I think that's what they released about that, is that they would be fighting another group of predators, but I don't know. So Yeah. Yeah. Either I mean, way, I, yeah. needless to say, what a cool character, uh, with tons of possibilities. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, the original Predator movies were, were something else. They were cool. The Arnold Schwarzenegger one, too. They're, they're just good, yeah. you know? Um, everywhere I go, I mean, anytime I'm in the woods, I'm always on the on the lookout for Predator. It won't you matter. Know? You wouldn't see him. He's camouflaged. You know, that, that's the thing, but sometimes he has a tell, you know? You see a little <laughs> flutter or, or things look a little, uh, you know, things in the trees look a little uh, off. You know the, the predator has a tell. Oh yeah, he's gonna kill us. I can. He has a tell. Sometimes you sometimes you see a little shimmer. Yeah, yeah. That, that's ah, oh, that's really good. Uh, so for those those people, unlike Jimmy, who enjoy the the show Archer, oh yeah, you know that one of his top fears is predator. So anytime he's in the jungle, he always makes a reference to it. Oh cool, but that makes me love the predator even more. Uh, <laughs> that's why I want Archer to end with a predator just. <laughs> right in the back uh <laughs> yeah i you know i'm excited about this one and i'm interested to see how they bridge that kind of ling or that language barrier like they did in alien versus predator where he did like he would point at the like the human female and he'd be like or the woman he'd just be like point at something he'd be like you gotta do this and she'd be like oh okay you know so i wonder if they're gonna have some sort of transmitter or some sort of kind of uh, translator i should say so that way they can speak, and then it's like, oh, we can we made this device so we can understand the Predators. And it's like, hello. <laughs> yeah, didn't the Predator and the Arnold Schwarzenegger once say, speak English at the end, like F you or something like that? He What he did was that he was getting, like, um, recordings of them screaming stuff, and then he would, he was, like, listening to it, and then he would try to speak it back out or, like, send the recording or something like that. So, yeah, they could oh. learn... Yeah, like our language eventually. So maybe there's going to be one predator who's like all he, he knows, like he's talking back about. He's like, well, you know, it's like it's a very interesting tribe that I'm a part of. But there's another tribe over there that's trying to kill us. We <laughs> yeah. figure we do it. It's like a beast situation. <laughs> like this is a very well-spoken predator. He's like, I, I've learned your archaic I, I tone. Do, I do my signature move in the middle of the movie theater. It's the movie, uh -oh. ruined. <laughs> movie, movie ruined. Movie ruined. <laughs> Joe's just. Mm. I'm out of here. See, I'd just be fascinated. I'd be like, why did they do this? Uh, yeah, what? Who, who is in charge of this? I must know them. 
<laughs> and killed him. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about Predator, but you know, Predator always for me now is just I always think Predator and Alien, and when I think Alien, I think Predator. And this week, yeah, Alien Covenant. How did Covenant. they ever become associated? Sorry to interrupt you there. I know no. you were leading into something, but how That's did they fine. ever become associated? Yeah, fun fact, I believe there was a comic that came out a long time ago that pitted them against one another before the films came out. So those two like fought in the comics somewhere, whoever owned those comic rights, and then they started making the movies. And then from now on, it's just kind of like, oh, you know, for people like myself who weren't born in the 70s or 80s, aliens and predators have always kind of been at each other's throats figuratively and um, quite literally for quite some time. So I always think like, ah, oh, like xenomorphs and predators. And I just, I, I like them both. I, you know, we talked, Joe's obviously, if he's Superman on Batman, he's, you know, he's xenomorph. I am predator. And uh, Joe, which <laughs> reminds me, you gotta watch those. I saw a lot on my, my trip the, to the convention, a ton of xenomorph and predator stuff. And I kept saying, I'm like, this is Joe and this is me. There's like one of them playing chess and like the predator is like holding a glass of red wine and they're both just like sitting there like looking at a board. Like, it's yeah, like this is such a good I love movie. that. I love that. That's I swear I've so shared good. that with you in the past. It's it's too good. Uh, but yeah, so Alien Covenant's coming out this week. The sequel to Prometheus, but a prequel to the original Alien film. And I kind of want to talk about some of the Alien films of uh, yesteryear. So yeah. Joe and I watched Alien a long time ago. I don't think we watched Alien 2 together. We tried watching Alien 3, and we're like, Ugh, this is horrible. And then we watched Alien Requiem, which is Alien 4, uh, which was the script was done by the one Joss Whedon, which a lot of people kind of find that interesting. Anywho, yeah. Uh, yeah. Joe, so what is it about these movies that you like so much? What is it about the Xenomorph? What is it about this the, the atmosphere? Is it dark, gritty, and ominous? Is that why I like it? Uh. That sci-fi often can be a little. I like how these have a. They have a much better horror tone to them than others. Sure. Um, you know, in, in first and foremost, the design, the fact that the monster creature, the alien, is so intriguing and downright. It's just sexy. It's a feast for the eyes. It really is. I mean, you look at that thing, and it's like, whose imagination thought up that design? You know, the no eyes, the just the kind of hooded head with the the acidic, drooly teeth, with a second set with a little tubular tooth thing that comes out. Come on, such a cool idea. Um, it, it really is. It's just a sexy design that. Flat, you know, scares the shit out of you. Yeah, no, that's totally true. Uh, you know, looking back at that first one, and they've changed, you know, as far as how they present the alien, it was probably one of the most terrifying just in that instance, in that first film, because it was just the one, and it was prowling around, it was taking everybody down. There's a funny scene in the vents, though, where they have, like, they're trying to get it, and it kind of, they, like, see it, and it, like, puts its arms out, and then they, like, cut away to it. I just think it's like, I want a hug. Um, yeah. But it's, uh, it's quite a terrifying foe, and the fact that it kind of has evolved to be, like, this perfect killing machine. And there's, like, this, like, a hive mind, and there's a queen, and it's, like, really disgusting. Like, all these sick egg sacs everywhere, and all this goop, which I don't know how that works, how they string people up on the walls. But do you have a favorite, you know, alien film, or is there a favorite scene in any of the aliens that you're like, man, I really love that scene and alien vs predator is in there too so if there's like one we're like man that's a good one. yeah the avp movies are okay um you know they're more of like a time killer if you ask me sure yeah uh, they're just kind of can't be especially the second one is just kind of like what can we do to freak people out and be gross it's like okay, yeah let's... and even the first one is kind of shortened to the point there's not a hell of a lot to it i don't feel but um I like the story, though. The lore there is fun. Yeah, the lore there, you know, the kind of nod that the Predators were, you know, they've been coming to Earth since the beginning of time, dang near, and all that. And then, you know, their relationship with Alien is being like a test of sorts, right? Mm -hmm. The serpents, um, yeah. So, I mean, if I had to pick a movie, though, I've always, anytime I see uh alien resurrection or i catch it on tv or something like that i'll, I'll generally watch a bit of it I, I enjoy it i've seen it quite a few times um and that's the one where they're on the space 
uh, cargo ship or whatever and all that. And I think they, they're, they're held in containers or something, and one uh, kills another, and, it melt, and the blood melts through the floor. Oh, yeah, like a few of them kill one of them. They gang yeah, up on that they one. They gang yeah. up and kill it in order to escape, and it turns into a everybody running for their lives kind of a deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love... I love the scene where the one guy's got the uh, handicapped person on his back and they're climbing the ladder. They're getting out of the water, a flooded area. Mm -hmm. And the freaking alien, they show it go under the water and they show it swimming. Oh my gosh, I think that's so cool. Um, but any any alien movie where you get those jump scares, all, it's dark and then all of a sudden they turn and it's like that one that you described where it's just like, you yeah. know, right there. But... The one thing I can say about all these movies, yes, they use CG, but for the most part, these alien movies, they've used a guy in a suit, similar to Predator, guy in a suit, which I think is awesome. Yeah. Awesome. It, it gives you that sense of there's actually something there. Whereas CG, you know, we've kind of learned and, and really expected a lot to where you really have to dismiss your – dismiss your critical eye to you know, really immerse yourself and believe that that monster is right in front of that person. Mm -hmm. Whereas the practical effect with the guy in a suit, I mean, it, it's clearly a physical presence. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, and I totally. love that. I love that, especially in those little jump scare moments or the, the tight, intimate uh, shots. I, I love that sort of thing. I really yeah. do. Yeah, totally. And that's one of the reasons I love, uh, I really enjoy that. I like Predator. And then I think of like old, you know, Lord of the Rings, especially like Fellowship, just like people yeah. just full armor. You're like, man, that's like a real dude, like right in this yeah. moment. Yeah, and for it's a sci-fi film, that's something that's hard to come by these days. That's really so is. true. That's really true. I know Star Wars has tried to kind of put that back in a little bit where they can. They don't do it a ton, but, uh, you know, looking back at the older Star Wars, once you watch those, Joe, you know, you're going to be like, wow, they actually used a lot of just, like, practical effects on this stuff. And it's like, yeah, yeah puppets and well, stuff. Well, now they have the money and the budget behind it to, you know, spend as much as they possibly can or want on the, yeah. on the CG stuff. So Which it sometimes it makes sense for time and money purposes, that sort of thing. But, uh, you know, use it, use it where it makes sense and where it works. Yeah. Um, yeah. But with these Predator and these Alien films, I mean, Predator lends itself perfectly to uh, get a real suit and have a guy act out this part because it, it, it just works too well, especially yeah. when you're having human-Predator interaction, close, intimate interaction. Um, it just makes sense. Yeah. And, and it's cost savings, too. Time and cost. That's true. That's very true. Uh, you know, one thing we didn't really touch on here because we're talking about all the Alien movies and... I, I think that a lot of times we think of just, oh, the characters, the cast are basically just cannon fodder, which I'd say 99% of that is true. Yeah. But there is one exception in that Sigourney Weaver as Ripley is kind of a through line. And then in Requiem, she's a clone that she can play really great basketball. And she's got alien DNA, which, by the way, she did make that no-look shot when she's walking away. She does like an over-the-head shot. It, the ball goes out of frame, but she does it. Um, anyway... I, are you kind of interested in this new group of people knowing that there's a great chance that everyone's going to die? Yeah, well, this new group of people is technically prior to Sigourney Weaver. Yes, this is true. Yes, but yeah. that means that no one is safe, and especially yeah. these guys. Like, usually a sequel, you're like, oh, they could live. Like, these group, this, like, they'd be old people that would be just terrified, you know, <laughs> if they're, you know, depending on what the, the time gap yeah. is. Part of me wants to rewatch Prometheus because isn't uh, oh what's his name? He plays Magneto. Fastbender, Michael Fastbender. Yeah, Fastbender. He was in that Prometheus movie, right? He was uh, he was the droid or the the ro synthetic robot. Yeah, the android. The guys like the milk for blood, basically. <laughs> Always yeah, getting knocked about. Yeah. Lubricant or oil or whatever it is, yeah. but somebody they come back and they piece him back together, and he's in this new Alien Covenant movie, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Prometheus kind of establishes the history of the Xenomorph. I know it kind of shows the first rendition and all that. And I think we're going to see the um, a little bit more of a flesh out of how it came to be and a little more focus on the Xenomorph. Uh, that first one, obviously, you don't quite get all that. Um, 
So this one, I think, will be more focused on the alien itself, the xenomorph. So I'm excited for that. And um, yeah, I mean, it may be a, a situation of a bit more cannon fodder with the cast, but I got a feeling that uh, you know, fast bender and maybe um, the short haired girl are going to be kind of the main focus and uh, go on from here. So we'll see. Yeah, I, I do want to watch Prometheus too. I haven't seen it yet, and because uh, Joe is really excited about this movie, and I don't really want to see it unless I kind of know what's going on. Not that you might need to do that. I don't know yet with, for this film, but I think it just it's smarter to watch it as opposed to not. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm gonna. And the whole I'll, idea I'll behind it. Prometheus is they think they're kind of searching out humans' creators, and they think that these people in the civilization that they found on this planet are who created humans. Oh yeah, the um, engineers. The engineers, yeah, it's kind of, I don't know what you would call it, Scientology or whatever, but if you're religious, you're going to assume this movie is uh, the devil's spawn, so um, <laughs> don't even bother, but it, it's interesting, I, I mean, it sets itself up for a good story, and uh, uh, it makes sense, you know? Yeah, well, I heard uh, one kind of like, I don't know if this was like a deleted scene or like a deleted concept, but apparently... Uh, in the lore for Prometheus, they would have sent uh, one of the engineers to Earth to kind of be a, like a, a messiah or something like that. But we ended up crucifying that person, and that person was Jesus, so that Jesus would be one of the engineers. But I would imagine if they would have put that in as like a formal thing into a film, people would have out been outraged. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, maybe don't, like, just don't yeah. even maybe your sci fi movie about creepy well, aliens. I, I think what's cool is that, you know, similar to like when uh, Alien vs. Predator, their Antarctic uh, temple that's uh, oh, buried that. under ice, they kind of throw it back to history, and these people worship the predators as like gods, right? Yeah kind of an interesting historical thing, you know, and the predators help them advance their civilization and that sort of a thing. Um, it, it just creates a firm concrete foundation for this whole series and saying that the engineers came to Earth once in a while and they were worshipped or whatever, you know. I mean, similar to like Egyptian history. I mean, they worship these weird strange gods and basically, you know, it, it, it's just... It's just a different take that challenges things and the way of thinking and something that builds a foundation to justify the storyline, which is all the better, I think. It doesn't have to impact your actual true beliefs unless yeah. you're really, I mean, it's a movie for crying out loud. Sure, yeah, exactly. And I kind of like how, I, th I think like, oh, if you went to like a, it kind of looked like Central American or it's in the Antarctic now, I don't know how that worked out, but like where the Predators showed up to the civilization, if you would like have this advanced civilization that's all this technology these ships come flying down to you you'd probably at that time be like yeah those are like our gods now you know and it's like oh yeah we need to borrow a few of your humans to make aliens and they will be sacrificed but it's going to be a good thing for them because it's you know the predator is probably just like, Arr, like Arr, and all the chieftains are like ah oh, this is great you know and they're like okay well these people are going to die but whatever uh doesn't matter to us and it's going to be really painful we don't have any morphine for this and uh <laughs> we have some super morphine on the ship you know and the, the predator is like shut up that's for us um, no that's for us <laughs> <laughs> a few of those acid birds that, that that hurts you know i i know we're tough but you know, I, I kind of like my morphine, you know. <laughs> I'm on it all the bed. time. I got yeah, a bag on my back right now. What do you think they're doing, Joe, when they're pressing all those buttons? That's just injecting more morphine so they can take the hit. <laughs> they're, like, <laughs> <laughs> they're just like, oh, they're like, I guess we'll team up with the humans. Whatever. How many levels does this thing have? Six, six. Yes, I'll hit the six because I want the most I can get. Oh, yeah. It just yeah. keeps pressing it. just keeps pressing it. Uh, yeah, but you're excited about this. I know you love this franchise, and I'm hoping that this movie is better than Prometheus because I heard mixed things about it at best, but yeah, but, but Prometheus is almost like the sacrificial lamb. Um, <laughs> you know, well, f for instance, I feel like for the true fans of the franchise and the alien xenomorph deal and even the predator stuff, it's kind of like a, like I said, a foundation building film where it kind of goes back to the early beginning um, and establishes how these things came to be. It's not like it was just out of thin air or they were manufactured in a lab. Um, it, it goes back and, and really tells and fleshes out a story, which I think is really cool and good on the on the creators and the in the studio. I just uh, unfortunately, I think Prometheus was only kind of successful among the true fans. Um, I don't think it was necessarily a successful thing for the masses or the mass film goers. So, um, Alien Covenant, I 
feel like that might be a little different, you know. I'm hoping that people that loved like the first Alien, because I remember my parents talk about when the first Alien movie came out, which was back in, let's see, I'm going to look it up. It's like 70-something, I believe. It's 79? Oh, yeah, now, I got it. That's tough to believe, but... When that movie came out, my mom and my dad still describe when they saw that in theaters. And, you know, it's kind of new. Theaters were a big deal at that time. And when they saw that movie, I mean, my mom talks about how she kept her eyes shut for half of it. And people in the movie theater literally screamed and freaked out. Some left. You know what I mean? Yeah. That is cool. That's, that's history and, and just... Uh, it provides a bit of nostalgia being that the series goes back so long, right? Yeah, sure. That's how I feel about it. Then you got one that came out in 86, then 92, 97 for Re Resurrection, which, wow. Oh, that's what it was, <laughs> not Requiem Resurrection. Yeah. yeah, then 2012 for Prometheus, and then now here we are, 2017 with Covenant. Um, and now keeping in mind, the most recent being Prometheus is it takes place before all of them. And Covenant takes place right after that, before the first Alien movie, which, yeah. cool. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah, well, it's interesting, and I'm really excited to hear your thoughts on it, because uh, I don't know if this is still happening, and I'm not going to put you, I'm not going to, you know, put my foot on your throat or anything, but if you're, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. I know next week we'll talk about it, regardless of what we make, what other kind of coverage we might have. Hey. Jimmy, Jimmy, too, too, much, too much pressure on the throat, Jimmy. Welcome to my world. Um, no. <laughs> I have fun. Uh, but yeah, I, I will see this in theaters even without you. And uh, we'll talk about it next week, you know, at, at yeah. length. Old yeah. Alien Covenant. Mm. Hopefully I'll, uh, let's not make any substantial promises just yet. But we yeah. may see a exclusive Joe Lever review. Not um, like you made a declaration on any of the former podcasts saying that you do exactly yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, there's already a substantial commitment. So you're going to see a review from good old Joe here. No. And uh, guess who's running next week's podcast? This guy. Ka-chow. Bazinga. Ba-bam. Oh, gosh. We're going to get in so much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like, uh, hi, everybody. We're doing a podcast. Jimmy's here. I'm here. Uh, let's talk about this uh, this film. It's pretty good. Huh? You like it? That's no, good. It's, Time kills are out. It'll be a little better than that. A little better than that. I have all the faith in the world in you. And it's fun for me because I've, you know, I, I steer the ship so often. So it's nice to have my first mate. It's like, you know, I'm going to sit down. If I'm, you know, I'm going to barbosa it up and eat a couple of green apples. Yeah, the arms out. are tired from steering, right? They, start, they get tired sometimes. It's, I try to keep them buff, but, you know, it's, it's, it's hard whoa, whoa, to do. Put, put those pythons back in their cage. Hey, you better call a you better call a vet because these pythons are sick. I'm so sorry. You can make that joke about anybody, not me, because my pythons are not not sick. They're not pythons. They are garter snakes. <laughs> anyway, speaking of pythons and garter snakes, they like to kill a lot of things, don't they, Joe? Because they eat those things because they're carnivores. Yeah, I heard of a python swallowing a clock once because of the ticking sound. Thought it was food. Whew. Are you serious? Yeah, I guess you could say that Python killed a little time. Ah, time you got me. Killers. That's right. It's time for time killers. The games we've been playing, the movies we've been watching, the TV shows we've been viewing, the cookbooks we've been reading. And Joe, I gotta be honest with you, you did get me there. I was like, oh, that sounds like a cool story. <laughs> I was like, it's like a, like a crocodile from Peter Pan or I hope something. I captured everyone's attention there. It captured mine for sure. Uh, so, Joe, what even what you've been chilling with lately, man? Oh, I forgot to mention this segment brought to you in part by. Canada Dry Ginger Ale. Chris. Diet. Cool. Refreshing. Ah, Canada Dry. Anywho. Um, so, yeah. Oh, so good. Uh, killing time. I've yeah, been maybe. doing a bit of it. Uh, super busy with work, but uh, I still find, finding a little time to kill here and there. Uh, on my second go around of Archer. About to finish that one up, and I'll probably leave her live for a little bit, catch up on new episodes later. Mm -hmm. um, recently, I watched, rewatched Suicide Squad. I had only seen it in theaters. I walked out after seeing it in theaters and thinking it was pretty good. I didn't have too many complaints. I liked the Joker. 
Um, that's about it. <laughs> As I look back at it, it was very cliche. I hate some of the lines and the writing. Yeah. Um, and it's a little flat. It, it, I mean, my girlfriend was there watching it with me a little bit, and her words were, this is the dumbest movie ever. And as she said that, I'm watching, I'm like, I can see why you would say that. You're kind of right. It, it was not good. I was not good. One day, Joe, when we start to get more into the commentary game, that's the only way I think I'll ever rewatch that. It's like if we had a reason to go back and just be like, ah, oh, no, like, what are yeah. they doing? What are they thinking? Like you get a couple cool moments and all, and I love yeah. the El Diablo thing yeah, when he turns he... into the big fire demon. So which cool. Is and at first, I'm like, all right, he's just going to melt the shit out of this, this guy. And all yeah. of a sudden, it you know goes south on him. But, you know, before he let into that fight, he's like, what does he say? Something like, uh, oh, it's on, bitch, or something yeah, like that. It's... Like, oh, my God. Who are you catering to here, the little kids? They're trying to be guardians. They're trying to be guardians of the galaxy. No, that was, that was just a stupid line. Stupid, cliche That's... line. I don't like it. Uh, it would have been better if he just would have like yelled or roared and gone in, you know. But uh. you know, there's a line like that that's very similar. Ripley in Aliens, she says something very similar to that Queen Alien, and it's really cool because she's in that big mech suit. It's like ah, that's pretty cool. That's all I'm just trying to say. Yeah. It can be it can be done right, but it was just not such a CGI character that he was. He's like this cool fire demon we just saw for the first time, and he says that, and you're like what? Yeah, yeah, you just lost all credibility, SA. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, what else have you been, you been playing anything lately, too? Uh, kill a little time with a little Titanfall last night with my good buddy Jimmy here. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was a downer about it. We were getting messed up pretty pretty quickly, and I was... Yeah, sad. out of maybe the five or six matches we played, three or four of those were pretty pretty rough. We were having a tough go of it. But I think we had a couple good ones in there, and, and that game is still good. It really is. But there's a lot of people that are very committed to that franchise and are playing that game, like, every night when they get home from work or every day when they don't go to work. And uh, it makes it a little tough. Kind of Call of Duty-esque. You know, if you're not keeping up with Call of Duty and you're not playing a lot, you're, you're kind of the outlier there. And by outlier, I mean your KD ratio is poor. <laughs> yeah. no, you're so, not wrong. You're not wrong. Um, but we still got skills. We did all right in a couple of them, and uh, I don't, I don't know that I'm gonna abandon that game. I'll still play it for a bit of time killing now and again. I think so. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it'd hurt too if they came out with some new content. I know they had a limited uh, feature of a different style game where it was purely uh, like Titanfall team deathmatch, where you only were a Titan and you could respawn as your titan as you died. No nuclear ejection, no pilot features or anything like that. That was cool. I hope they bring that back. Um, I'd like to see a few more maps, and uh, maybe even some new titan characters. That would be nice, new titan loadouts, but I, I don't know that that'll happen. They've yeah. already got the six, and that's probably how it's going to stay. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so killing time with that. Ghost Recon, you know, the norms. I don't think anything too new lately, so. Nice. Well, for me, you know, you just touched on that. We've played a little bit of Overwatch here and there, and I'm trying to think if there's anything. I've been watching a little bit of, like, Bill Nye Saves the World on Netflix, just here and there, the ones I want to see. Uh, I know some people have are kind of mixed on that, and they could say it's, like, kind of political. Uh, it's just interesting, and it does get a little preachy sometimes, and some of their correspondence aren't that cool, but, like, seeing Bill Nye back at it, it's kind of fun. But, like yeah. I said, I haven't watched all of it. And, you know, I, I haven't even watched it, but I, I get a sense of what you're saying based on the little I've seen on it. Um, you know, there's been some online things and promotional marketing things for it, but those things have to be a little preachy, I think. And I yeah. think they're just trying to get their point across. And whether you believe in global warming and environmental effects or not, I why would these scientists be going so far out of their way to – preach about these things if it wasn't legit. Yeah, exactly. And I another thing I that I like a lot about him is he covered um, 
GMOs or genetically modified organisms. And oh, yeah, he, things like that too, yeah. Yeah, he took a really hard stance a while ago against them, and then he went and he did his research and stuff, and then he said, guess what? You know what? I've changed my stance. I was wrong, and here's all the information. And I really respect that a scientist will is still about the science. Like a scientist who's like out in the public eye and can say, hey, guess what? I was wrong, or I've changed my mind. I'm a human. I can do that. And sure. I, I, I like that a lot. I'm like, sure. oh, good for you, man. Like, he changes sweet. his his idea of it based on cold, hard facts. Exactly. Exactly. That's what it is. And that's what the show is all about. All of it is about, like, fact versus fiction and kind of getting away from, yeah. like, what we think we know versus what is true. But, yeah, it's um, it's a pretty interesting show, regardless of how you feel about it. It's it's okay. The format of the show is kind of weird and wonky, but uh, and it's a little, like, over. I don't know. Like I said, it's kind of preachy. I, he, like Joe said, he has to be. That's just the best word I can use for it. But I get it. The guy's been screaming about all this stuff for so long, and he's like, "Finally, got a Netflix show, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna yell about it so you guys can hear it." So, yeah. yeah um, all the Republicans are rolling their eyes and hitting the the pause button <laughs> right now. Um, yeah. I, well, I'm not. I'm not too it's concerned right. about that. We, we yeah. don't side with anybody here. We are exactly. Uh, we are an unbiased Legion. group. The Legion is all encompassing. Anyway, besides that, I've been watching this vlogger that I, I've been watching the Tim Tracker for a long time. People know that. There's these guys who live, or this guy um, and his wife who live in Florida, and they go to all the theme parks, and they do all that stuff, and I really liked it. And then I started watching this guy named Justin Scarred. That's with two R's. Really cool. His uh, vlogs are a little more edited. He's a little more, he would even say it himself, he's more hyper. He's a little more spastic. He's a little crazier. But it's way, it's very comical and he's not afraid about sharing um like stuff that his own personal problems in his life and he has a quest for positivity and i know it's been really fun to watch those videos it's very um cool to watch someone go through a lot of these problems and then come out and still be like yeah look at the best thing like try to see the best in everything i'm like that's cool that's what i'm gonna try to do hmm. so yeah it's been fun so check him out uh i'll try to link it down below but uh, if you go check it out and you like it Alan jimmy says you're from critical reviews so good um besides that though joe I don't think I have anything else that I really need to talk about. I mean, I've been playing a little Darksiders 2 endgame stuff. Just waiting for uh, some more Darksiders 3 sweet info. Just waiting every day. Uh, anyway, that means we get to move into my fag- favorite segment of the show. I can't even say that word or that phrase. Community questions feedback. and community feedback. Community feedback and questions. Definitely won't edit that part out that Joe just did right there. Everybody gets it. That's just special for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe, I asked everybody... A very simple question this week. Alien or Predator and why? That's the and why. Wasn't that like the worst or the word why in school? It'd be a very simple question and then they would just put the like why at the end and you're like, ah, explanation. <laughs> anyway, we got some good ones here. Night Warrior 30 says, nice question. Predator for its instincts. Rick Argomata says, alien because I never watched Predator. Mm, there you go. Uh, Katie B. Awesome. Katie. Uh, Predator based on the look. Uh, our good friend Fragadin, though, gives a, a, a more detailed answer. Alien, because they can evolve their species into any life form, but as a superior version of said being. That's a pretty good answer. And then finally from Anna, uh, Predator, they're pretty cool. I only watched Alien vs. Predator when I was much younger, and Predator was seen as the lesser of two evils. I love that uh, right there. That's so good. <laughs> the lesser of two evils. Very true. Very, very true. All right, Joe. We got some questions for this week, though. First question, would you rather have a flying submarine or an underwater airplane? Hashtag Critical Podcast. That's from our friend Daleb. So, again, flying submarine or an underwater airplane? <laughs> Ooh, either way, it sounds like expensive uh, method of travel, um, you know, for fuel and all that energy consumption. And I'm just asking you a question here. The other thing is, do you think the people selling the underwater airplane are giving you an airplane that, like, doesn't function and it's just underwater, whereas the submarine is definitely flying, right? Yeah, I guess there's that part of it, not to mention, how, really, where can you travel? You're limited on travel if you're underwater. If you're flying, you can fly over the water, and your travel is basically unlimited. So I want that damn flying submarine. Only I want the cockpit remodeled. I want it comfortable. I want uh, full, full bar uh, meals served, basically first class. You know, the sonar is not going to help you though, Joe. You only have the periscope to see where you're going. <laughs> so it's like uh, clouds. Uh, That's fine. Clouds. Have you ever seen a sub? Look out, planes! Here I come. 
<laughs> it just goes flying through a 747. It's basically a flying torpedo that won't that, – that just does does good stuff. You get, like, radio communications. They're like, are you sure you're going to clear us? And you're like, yeah, I'm seeing right over – there's nothing right in front of me here. And it's just like a really tall periscope. It's like looking through. You're like, it's fine. Nothing. Nothing. I see. I see the. I see the top fin of your tail wing there. I, I should clear. <laughs> so good. All right. Night Warrior Thirty asks us: Have you ever used cheat codes to gain advantage over your opponents? I'm guessing in a game. Hashtag Critical Podcast. Joe, have you ever done that? I'm trying to remember if I ever had like back on N64 days. I don't think so. Usually, I just use them like GTA, like in the campaign. I'm like, I can jump really high now. Like, <laughs> so. say it one more time. Uh, have you ever used cheat codes to gain advantage over your opponents? Uh, if over the computer, you mean, then yes. I think I use cheat codes for uh, MX versus ATV on like PlayStation Two or something to get unlimited funds. But you didn't use it against another person, though. It's not no, like you put, like. No, I don't think I ever had the opportunity to. Um, so yeah. Fair enough. Cool. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm trying to think if I played like World of War or not or Warcraft Three back in the day, but I guess it would be against computers. So he said opponents. So I think I would use like the there is no spoon. I'd have like infinite mana or like infinite money or something yeah, like uh, that. Uh, yeah. Warcraft. I think when I was a kid, I had a friend who played that a lot, and he let me borrow it. And obviously, he uh, gave me the cheat code when I started. So which Warcraft was it? I don't know. It was one of the early ones, like way Tides early. Two Tides of Darkness, maybe. Were there boats? Yeah. Yeah, boats. Yeah. Ah, that's the one I started on too, man. It's freaking great. That one's Death Knights, man. Yeah. I love them. Anyway, next question comes in from Anna. That's uh, Echo Critical. Hashtag Critical Podcast. What do you think of how in movies slash games, when there's a lead male and female, they're often romantic interests? What do you think about that, Joe? Um, Male, female uh, leads, I mean, video game or film, I mean, it's oftentimes that they are developing a relationship as time goes on. They're doing things you would normally never do with uh, other people. Uh, I mean, you're bound to get close to some extent, and if in normal animal instincts would lead you down that path, I think. As long as there's attraction there, I think that it's bound to happen, right? You know, especially if it's strenuous circumstances and you're helping one another, um, it just lends itself well to set it up that way. So, yeah, uh, you know, I think once in a while, and we're starting to get closer to this, is like platonic relationships. So, look at a very hyper specific example that I will present here a Pacific Rim at the very end of that movie, Charlie Hunnam's character and uh, this his female partner in this big mech, they kind of go down or whatever, and they, they survive through all this, and then they just, like, hug each other, and, like, that's it. Like, they don't, they're not like, I love you or whatever, and they don't, like, kiss and all that. So <laughs> I think we're getting to a point where it's not that, and then you look at something like one of the more recent Star Wars with Finn and Rey, not necessarily romantic interests at all for one another. They're just kind of like, we're on this journey together, and good luck to you. I hope you don't die. I hope you don't die, you know, kind of thing. So sure. I think we're moving away from that, so... That's what I would say about that. It's fine. I don't mind it. Sometimes it makes sense. Sometimes it doesn't. So typically in like the fantasy or fairy tale movies, like a Tangled, you kind of want like Finn and Rapunzel to end up together because they both seem like good people and they like each other. So yeah, this is what I think. And final question for this week, Joe, comes in from our great friend, Fragadin. What are some of your biggest pet peeves while gaming? Hashtag critical podcast. Joe, what grinds your gears, buddy? When you're gaming, what's the things that bug you? <laughs> I know what you're going to say. <laughs> How could you know? <laughs> um, what grinds my gears? Uh, people that teabag. Sure. Or, and it can also be external, too. Like, so if, like... Like a lot of lights on or no lights on or something like that. Or yeah, it could be things like that. But generally, I just like to sit back in my chair with a nice cold drink and uh, play. That's sure. kind of how I roll. Um, I don't really require a lot. Um, sometimes bright lights, like if my computer is bright and it's in front of me on the coffee table and I'm looking at the TV, that bright light kind of throws it for me or for some reason it ruins my focus. So normally I'll turn brightness down. But um, – as far as like internal gameplay type stuff, I hate like Overwatch. I last night I had a tracer kill me, and walk up and teabag me at the final moment. 
Yeah, that's I rough. I think it is the most disrespectful thing ever. And she had help. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. okay, you're a good player. I get it. It's much more commendable if you just kill me and move on. The whole teabagging thing is just immature and classless. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. That's true. Killing me was enough of a statement. Fair enough. I get that. I, um, I later found that person. I killed them in their own home. In virtual reality, because as a sponsor uh, who is definitely gonna, they're they're gonna you know die Canada dry does not like to sponsor such <laughs> violent behavior. Uh, I mean, I would never. I mean, you know, unless they stole your die Canada would, dry, then you I have would to never. <laughs> Uh, you know, for me, I think, like, externally, I guess it would be, hmm, I guess anything that breaks the immersion. So if, like, uh, like, a knock at the door, or if you're playing, like, an RPG and you're trying to get through, like, a lot of story stuff and you keep getting distracted by people or somebody needs something, a phone call. Uh, In-game, the teabagging thing's pretty bad. Um, I hate, and this isn't just when, like, my friends do it, I hate when I look in a multiplayer game at a person who is just standing there and they're on my team and my team's losing. And then they're just they're just standing like away from keyboard, all that stuff drives me nuts. I'm like, come on. And then the biggest thing is not playing according to plan. Everybody's got a. Pl I like to have a plan when I'm going into a game. All right. And my friends, we all agree. We're all gonna do this thing. We're all gonna we're gonna group up or we're gonna do this thing. Then somebody, I'm not gonna name any names here. A wild Mustang of a person's like, you know what? This time, boys, let's be exactly as quiet as possible. We'll just be as, as sneaky as we possibly can be. I will have the utmost patience here at Ghost Recon. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that'll be fine. Maybe this will be different. Maybe we'll do this quietly and we won't set off any alarms. Oh no. It's never like that. It is just I I oh it's like oh, did you shoot somebody and you're like oh yeah and then this, this person's like oh now we're hunted and now we're engaged or or you're like oh we're running alongside each other in a first person shooter I'm like let's go up this way and then I look on the mini map I look to my left they're just the person's gone the person is, is gone then they're like oh you gotta back me up and I'm like dude I died I'm like I was where where were the heck were you so people who don't follow the plan it drives me nuts like listen I, I have ADHD. I see, not. Squirrel, I see a squirrel. I see a squirrel. All right. I gotta chase said squirrel. All right. You're like, you're like, let's roll together, Jimmy. Let's play this game together. We are not playing together. We are not playing together. You're playing a whole different <laughs> other game. I'm just sitting over here dying, and I'm like, where the heck is Joe? Joe's just yeah. like, Woo, dang, I'm back out. I'm like, where are you? What is happening? I don't know what that means. <laughs> I just killed three people. I'm on to the fourth. Oh, I'm dead. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm guilty. I got to get better at it. It's literally on my bucket list to uh, <laughs> to, uh, to overcome that issue. That's not a, like a bucket list is like I want to go to the Eiffel Tower or something like that. So I like know. I have to change character. My bucket wrong. list is I want to make Jimmy happy and do something in the game according to plan. That's on my like, bucket list. Mostly Overwatch. It's like when we play it, it's like if you're like – if I'm if your tank and I'm support, and then you like you go off with Reinhardt flying down a hallway, and I'm like trying to follow you, and I died. You're like, dude, I need some heals. I'm like, my corpse is right by your foot. Like it's like <laughs> yeah. right. There. I don't know, it's Overwatch, I think we've gotten a little better. We tend to try and coordinate the alts and that sort of thing. Or we we'll never talk. coordinate alts though. Like we always talk about it, but we rarely do it. And then I watch <laughs> other teams do it, and then I think, why did they win? Oh, because that team of five on the other team decided to use their alts at the same moment. They're all like, now. And then it's like, you got your alt still? It's like, now nah, I burned it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I yeah, sometimes it's like judgment call, like, oh, I had to burn it. I, I, it was too good of an opportunity, and I couldn't wait for you because you're coming back from death or something of that nature. You know, it, it, it's tough, all right? It's tough. Why did I die in the first place? I mean, obviously, I'm not the best player in the world. I'll admit that. I'm not the greatest. I screw up plenty. And I'm not saying just you, Joe. Any player. I do this all the time. It's like games. Um, I remember playing a lot of League back in the day, and, man, MOBAs will really test your friendship because people will get really angry. And I know I've felt that rage before, <laughs> but man, the communities, oh, the typing that will come out of that, some pretty rough stuff. So if you like MOBAs, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, it's like, okay. Um, yeah, anyway. I, would, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't handle that. I would be right back on that keyboard just like. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing too. Yeah, profanity. 
that's the other thing we talk about away from keyboard. I hate the people who are at their keyboard too much. Their character will keep moving and then they'll stop moving, and then you know they're typing a book. Like they're typing a lot of stuff out right yeah. there. Yeah. Like, oh, or like I remember in an Overwatch match one time, I was playing Genji, and I never play Genji. At one point, he was my lowest, uh, least played character, like next to nothing for a time. I played him once on uh, what was that one? It's that uh, Russian one, kind of wintry oh, point. Volskaya take. Industries. Volskaya Industries. We're defending. Jimmy, you were playing with me, I believe, or no, we were attacking. And so I come in as Genji. I have another Genji come in the room with me, where where the big health pack is, and we were going for the first point. And I have my alt. I'm like, oh, there's a Genji here. There might be another player coming that way. I'm alting. I'm gonna. Try and kill this dude because he's he's pretty good. He's annoying me. Okay, so I ulted and I missed like all my swipes at him. I hit some other player, but the Genji ended up killing me without his ult. The guy sends me a message after the map the game is over and we lost because we didn't take point A, and um, he messages messages me and he's like, "Ha, next time don't." Uh, single alt or something like that, and uh, <laughs> I just I let it be for the time being. I played Zarya on the defense portion, and I made it my one and only goal to kill him as much as possible. And not only did I kill him every time I encountered him, but I killed everyone else, and we absolutely destroyed them. I don't even think they touched the point. So I, I messaged him back. I'm like, how's that fucking Genji treat me? And now you little... <laughs> like, I was mean about it. Like, super mean. He sends back, like, a little squinty face. And I'm just like, that's what you get, dick. So, <laughs> I'm so mean about that stuff. And I, I can't stand people like that. <laughs> it's like taking the high road for the for a good portion of that story. And then it's just yeah. like, one you won. You're like, instead of just staying up here, you're like, you know what, buddy? Like, <laughs> <Yeah. so> <laughs> I, I put him right back in his place. I'm like, go show your parents this message. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's probably some 10-year-old on the oh other side God. eating a popsicle, and I'm just ruining his night. Yeah, I think my favorite I've ever gotten was like playing like a Mercy or something, and it was like, you got to – oh, I was playing Mercy, and I think you were Bastion or Soldier, and yeah. I was just like, ex I'm like Joe, I'm going to exclusively heal you and damage boost you for like the beginning portion of this round to see how we do. And then some guy later on is like, learn how to support or whatever. And I was like, okay, man, like, you know what? That's not going to get you any heals. You're going to catch yeah. more. <laughs> yeah, that's the last heal you ever get. You're going to uh... more bees with sugar than vinegar or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like that. I don't know what people say. Yeah. Uh, that reminds me. Joe, have you ever heard of the term put the potato in the bucket? Is that a basketball term? I've never heard that in my life. All right. Then it's mine. I was thinking because I was playing Just Cause 3, which I forgot to mention Time Killers. And I just thought of that, talking about all that stuff, about the weird sayings. And I'm going to say I made that one up. And that's when I shot a missile into like a, a, something like a silo or something. So I put that in the potato in the bucket. Yeah. Uh, I've never heard that one, and considering I'm from potato country, that says something. So Joe's from Idaho. Yep, born and raised in Idaho. Um, Wisconsin, man. Stevens Idaho, Wisconsin. Point and Antigo, known for their potato growth. Yeah, all right. Anyway, uh, this man, this show really, <laughs> we covered so many things. We've covered politics, we've covered agriculture, uh, we covered you know, like animals, zoology, weather, meteorology, um, and honestly, but if you have any questions related to any, oh, that's you, <laughs> any of that stuff, please uh, just send in your questions or topics or little games we could play, like Guess Who. Uh, I love that one. We should do it again. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, we'll do that for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite when that one comes out. That'll be a really interesting one. Yeah. But uh, yeah, just send it to the hashtag Critical Podcast to either of our Twitter accounts. You can find me at GoCritical or at JimmyGood013. You can find Joe at lever underscore 627 that's lever just like beaver only with an l that is correct if you enjoy seeing uh my face specifically uh then go check us out over on twitch uh we're streaming i stream as much as i possibly can but if you have any recommendations for games or older games that you want to see please never hesitate to ask and we just love to have you come hang out for a bit uh i want to thank a few people i want to thank this is Dale for sending in a question and also making our fantastic theme music and obviously i always love thanking my good old friend, Yoren Evers. Thank you so much, my friend. Uh, he's the guy who does all the art here on the show. And uh, 
if you want to see or get some of his work for yourself, all you have to do is go over to at Jade Circle Art over on Twitter. Just tell him Jimmy sent you. Jimmy and Joe sent you. He'll know who you what, what we're talking about. Yeah, he'll know. Yeah. Uh, Joe, or you know that uh, Yoren also does our art for the Patreon that we just launched a few weeks ago. You know, he's, yeah, he's very talented. The Patreon. Yeah. The Patreon, yes. Segue. Um, but if you're interested <laughs> in supporting us any further besides subscribing, liking, and sharing this with a friend, which all those things are really good and easy and free to do, if you want to support us in a monetary fashion to make critical reviews even bigger and better than it already is, then just go check out patreon.com to see what kind of cool rewards and things you can get at the various tiers. And thank you for just um, checking it out. And again, if you don't want to support there, you can just, just share this with a friend, you know, if, if you like all the stuff we're doing. But thank you to all of our Legionnaires who've been doing that up until this point, have been retweeting and liking and sharing all that stuff. It it really does help a ton, or leaving us good reviews on iTunes or whatever else. But thank you so much. Thank you, Joe. And uh, well, yeah, next week we'll be talking about Alien Covenant. Oh boy! All right. Well, Prometheus, here I come. Anyway, come thank you guys so much. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. And remember to adapt and overcome. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.